The St. Petersburg game was invented by the Swiss mathematician Nicolas Bernoulli. The game starts with a pot containing $2. A dealer then flips a coin. The pot doubles every time a head appears. The game ends and the player wins the pot when a tail appears. A tail on the first flip leads to a payment of $2. A tail on the second flip leads to a payment of $4. A tail on the third flip leads to a payment of $8 and so on. Consider what you would be willing to pay to play this game. Would you pay $5? $10? $25? $50? More? The expected value of this game is equal to the sum of the following series. The expected value of x equals 1 on 2, times 2, plus 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 4, plus 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 8, plus 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 16, and so on. The first term in the series captures the 50% chance of a tail on the first flip, paying $2. The second term represents the 50% chance of a head on the first flip, followed by the 50% chance of a tail on the second flip paying $4. The third term represents the 50% chance of a head on the first flip, followed by the 50% chance of a head on the second flip, followed by the 50% chance of a tail on the third flip, paying $8. And so on. Multiplying out each of those terms results in a series of ones. The sum operator means sum for k equals 1, to k equals infinity, giving us an infinite sum of ones. And this equals infinity. Contrast this expected value of infinity with the sum you would pay to play the game. You are likely not willing to pay an infinite amount. This paradox is often resolved by introducing an expected utility function. The expected utility of this game is equal to 1 on 2 times the utility of w plus 2 plus 1 on 2 times 1 on 2 times the utility of w plus 4 plus 1 on 2 times 1 on 2 times 1 on 2, times the utility of w plus 8, plus 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times 1 on 2, times the utility of w plus 16. Similar to the calculation of the expected value, the first term in the series captures the 50% chance of a tail on the first flip, paying $2. The second term represents the 50% chance of a head on the first flip, followed by the 50% chance of a tail on the second flip paying $4, and so on. But here, we are using the utility function u of x. In the second line, I multiplied the probabilities of each coin flip together. That is, e of u of x equals 1 on 2, times the utility of w plus 2, plus 1 on 4, times the utility of w plus 4, plus 1 on 8, times the utility of w plus 8, plus 1 on 16 times the utility of w plus 16. In the third line, I express this infinite sum more compactly. That is, e of x equals the sum from k equals 1, to k equals infinity, of 1 on 2 to the power of k, times u of w plus 2 to the power of k. To take this equation further, we need to consider the particular utility function of the decision maker. What maximum sum would a risk-neutral player with u of x equals x be willing to pay to play the game? One strategy to determine this sum is to ask what sum would result in the player being indifferent between paying and rejecting a chance to play. That is the maximum sum, c, that they would be willing to pay. They will be indifferent when u of w equals the expected utility of x, minus c. We can solve this equation as follows. The utility of wealth equals the expected utility of x minus c, which equals, using the sum we created earlier, the sum from k equals 1, to k equals infinity, of 1 on 2 to the power of k, times u of w plus 2 to the power of k, minus c. Substituting in the utility function u of x equals x, w equals the sum from k equals 1, to k equals infinity, of 1 on 2 to the power of k, times w plus 2 to the power of k, minus c. Taking that equation we can further simplify to w equals 
w minus c plus the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1. As the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1 on 2 to the power of k equals 1. We can then simplify, which allows us to see that, given the infinite expected value of the game, the player would be willing to pay an infinite amount to play. c equals the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1, which equals infinity. That is, a risk-neutral player would pay any amount c to play. What is the maximum sum a risk-averse player with u of x? equals lnx would be willing to pay to play the game. How does their wealth affect their willingness to pay? Again we will determine at what c the player is indifferent between accepting and rejecting a chance to play, which occurs when u of w equals e of u of x minus c. Using the equation we calculated earlier, u of w equals the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1 on 2 to the power of k times u of w plus 2 to the power of k minus c. And substituting in the utility function, ln w equals the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1 on 2 to the power of k times ln w plus 2 to the power of k minus c. There is no closed form solution to this equation to enable us to determine c. We need to solve via numerical methods such as testing and iterating to a solution. If we did solve this, we would find that someone who is wealth of one cent would be willing to pay up to two dollars and one cent. They would need to borrow. Someone with wealth one thousand dollars would be willing to pay ten dollars and ninety-five cents. A person with a wealth of one million dollars would be willing to pay twenty dollars and eighty-seven cents. We cannot solve for a person with no wealth as ln zero is undefined. Why does willingness to pay increase with wealth? With log utility, as wealth increases, the slope of the log function increasingly approximates a linear function, the second derivative approaches zero. Hence, the gambler displays less risk-averse, closer to risk-neutral, behavior. One way to gain an intuition for why this gamble now has a finite value is to calculate the utility of a risk-averse player whose only asset is the opportunity to play this game. In that case, the expected utility of the gamble is the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1 on 2 to the power of k times u of 2 to the power of k, which, substituting in the utility function, equals the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of 1 on 2 to the power of k times ln 2 to the power of k, which, using the rule that ln x to the power of a equals a times ln x equals the sum from k equals 1 to k equals infinity of k on 2 to the power of k times ln 2. Taking that equation, we can further simplify to 1 on 2 times ln 2, plus 2 on 4 times ln 2, plus 3 on 8 times ln 2, plus 4 on 16 times ln 2, plus 5 on 32 times ln 2, and so on, which equals 1 on 2, plus 2 on 4, plus 3 on 8, plus 4 on 16, plus 5 on 32, and so on, times ln 2 which equals 2 times ln2. The change in the utility from each flip rapidly declines. Ultimately, the series of fractions sum to 2. We can then calculate what wealth is equivalent to this expected utility. The utility of w equals ln w, which equals 2 times ln2. Therefore, w equals e to the power of 2 times ln2, which equals 4. The expected utility from the game is equal to the utility of $4.